So in a new report here in the city of Seattle, more than half of the homeless people offered shelter by the city of Seattle say no. What's going on? We hear all these stories about how people are looking for housing, they can't get shelter, can't get temporary, they can't get permanent, they can't get whatever it is that they need. But when they're offered, over half of them say, mm, no. And that is that is literally one night in a shelter would count for this. So they're just basically saying outright, no. And how many of them stayed a night or two in a shelter just to get off the streets for one night? You know, they got to take all their stuff with them. They got to do something with their stuff because oftentimes the shelters don't have room for tents and a full on setup, right? So people got to do stuff with their stuff. It's just a huge train wreck. That's what we're talking about today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies. To be honest, why wouldn't I read news for reasonable people? All right, let's jump on in. I want to start with a, a quick video, and this uh, is by a local Fox affiliate, and they are talking about um, about this topic, and I want you to take a look and see. For those of you in the audio portion, I'll kind of describe what we got going on here. Yeah, Matt, the uh, city estimates there are a 1,000 people living unsheltered in downtown Seattle. This is one of those camps right here. And that, you know, the city has had a lot of efforts, named efforts to try and get people into shelters. You've had the navigation team. So what we're looking at is we are looking at a homeless encampment. This is right off of Mercer Street, I believe. Um, I was talking about a guy that was uh, standing in the homeless encampment, which is on a super s steep terrain, had a full on barbecue going, and it was just absolutely billowing up smoke and flames. This is that encampment. This is the encampment I believe that is the main, it's off Mercer Street. So it's the main in and out to downtown Seattle, kind of on the north end of Seattle. Like if you were to go to a Sonics game back in the day, you would take this exit into town. And if you're to go anywhere north out of Seattle, you would take, you would leave this exit. So you've got this homeless encampment literally right off the off ramp and on ramp to Seattle. It's, it's, it's just, it's not a good look. You currently have the HOPE team. You have the Regional Homeless Authority right now. And now you, uh, and despite their efforts, people living in tents just don't seem to want to accept the offers of shelter. A Seattle Parks Department crew is removing a squatter's homeless camp from a home along Thornton Creek, a home the city bought for roughly a million dollars for a flood control project. Just a handful of squatters were there when the crew arrived. At least one was referred to a shelter. And now there's new numbers that people removed from encampments. More than half of them are not accepting shelter. In 2021, the city's HOPE team referred 1,072 people to shelters, but only 512 enrolled and spent at least one night. We can't force someone to accept the offer but we're doing everything in our power to build relationships up until that point so that we have a better chance of getting them to say yes. And that's frustrating news to Seattle City Council members. That's what we're trying to measure is how that number starts to decrease. And if we're not paying attention to it, if we are, you know, tacitly ignoring it, um, we're not gonna be able to solve that problem. Been here for three months. We went to a camp in the heart of Seattle to see if anyone would accept offers of shelter or any help. What will it take for you to get off the street? Mm -hmm. That's a tough question. Are you afraid you're going to have to leave here? Um, yeah, at some point, yeah. Because this camp is blocking a sidewalk considered an obstacle, and lately those camps that are obstacles are being removed without warning. Do you think the city can get the homeless population down to zero in 12 months? Yeah, if they provide us housing, yeah. The director of the Regional Homelessness Authority has said with a coordinated effort, the downtown Seattle street homeless population can reach zero in 12 months. Do you think that they can reduce, get rid of everybody downtown and give them housing within a year? No. No. Oh, no, definitely not, because there are people who want to be out here. 
All right. So in one of those sequ sequences, you had uh, the red background of the Bank of America. And I remember the writing that they had some writing on one of the tents. Like, how is this happening in America? Well, because you're posting up a tent on the sidewalk. That's how it's happening. Um, so that was on a live stream that I did last week. I guess it was last. It was just over uh, just just about a week ago. I did a walk through downtown Seattle and I mentioned, I think I mentioned something about Bank of America and number of tents out in front. Well, uh, that was one of the tents, the tents that you saw riding on. I've uh, literally walked right past that and we looked at it. So we've had that moment together. So according to the report, the city's homelessness outreach and provider ecosystem that's commonly referred to as the Hope Hope Team. They referred 1,072 people to a shelter during the year, but only 512 of those people actually, in quotes, enrolled and spent at least one night there. All right. So how many of those 512 people spent one night and then booked it out, realized, oh, yeah, this isn't for me. This isn't the, my freedom is being impinged here. Meaning, they need to be able to do some drugs and they're not able to, so they got to book it out of there. Okay, you're not going to hear that often as a narrative because that's the brutal reality nobody really wants to talk about. By comparison, the city referred 815 people to shelters in 2020 and 265 spent at least one night at a shelter. Okay, so it, it's they're saying that it's getting better statistically, but these numbers are horrific. If you can't get people on the street into shelter, which we're being told they're so desperately looking for, if not even half are going to take up that opportunity for one night, what does that tell you about the folks who are living on the streets of Seattle? It tells me that they're not serious about making their lives better. They're okay with the status quo of living in a tent and getting pushed around. They're okay with that. Now, when a news crew comes around, yeah, they'll talk about, I really need a permanent place to live. But the bottom line is, is, is also in, in the same breath, these reporters will ask, what's it going to take you to get off the streets? And they'll say, literally, like we just saw, I don't know. Ugh. I mean, I'd have to make so many changes. And I say, Put people through detox, they make it through detox, they get some permanent housing. As long as they're sober, you know, figure that one out. That is, you know, it's got to be conditional. You can't just willy-nilly take somebody that's wildly addicted to drugs and take them out of a tent off the sidewalk of downtown Seattle and put them in a home and hope everything goes right. That's not how this game is played. But a lot of folks want to say housing first. And that's the theory that if you just get a roof over somebody's head, it's all going to work out. That to me is not reasonable. That has, it's just not, that's not the way this game is played. Have you talked to anybody that's wildly addicted to the fake Percocets, the M30s? Have you talked to anybody that's been in the midst of that? Yeah, just because you give them a roof over their head, they're not going to stop going out and, and scoring and doing whatever it takes to score, which means stealing stuff and selling it. And that's why we've got these open air markets and they're thriving because you've got so many people that need the money for drugs. It's not because they're hungry and they need a sandwich that they're stealing. They're stealing to hawk their goods on these gray, not even gray, these black, black markets that are run by you know, drug dealers and um, members of gangs. That's the bottom line. Bailey said 92% of referrals were for the city's 24-7 enhanced shelter or tiny house villages and case management and potential treatment for drug, alcohol abuse, and behavioral services. You do not hear a lot about getting people into treatment successfully. I think so much of it is because you know, they got to get really bad before they get to that point where they bottom out. And guess what? Unfortunately, getting really low and down and dirty when you're on the fake fentanyl, when you're on the fentanyl, the fake opioids, uh, it kills you or it just, it, it kills your brain. It does something to your head. If you're on this stuff for a while, it's not, I mean, people lose more than brain cells, they lose that cognitive ability to reason and think. And that's why I think they just, all right, I'm operating here in a tent. This is what I'm doing. I'm able to get by. 
And they just keep doing that for a long, long time. And that's why we've got so many people that are just doing their thing. And, you know, the needles, I mean, you can't tell me that we're not cleaning up tens of thousands of needles from these homeless encampments because they're all getting their tetanus shots. No, that's not a thing. They're shooting up drugs. And then when they get tired of shooting up drugs or they can't figure out how to shoot themselves up, they shoot themselves up on the foot or they put it up their butt or plenty of others smoke it, you know, and the city of Seattle helps out. Hey, here you go. Here's a kit to help you insert this where the sun doesn't shine because your veins may be a little bit, a little bit tired from the abuse you've put them through, but don't worry. We're here to help you clean needle and this other device thing around here. I don't even know what I don't even know. I don't even want to talk about that. The referrals were made from 119 encampment locations. The concern expressed by many city council members was the apparent increase in the number of camp removals considered obstructions by the city. Okay, so if it's an obstruction, carte blanche, go ahead, take her down. Get rid of it. You can do that. Mayor is doing that. So you've got a number of homeless encampments. Homeless encampment on 5th Avenue, I believe, outside of City Hall, where the mayor's office does have a 7th floor view looking down to the uh, encampment. It was deemed to be on the sidewalk. What What's happening is we're cleaning out downtown Seattle right now. We are cleaning out downtown Seattle. Um, and people are pissed. And um, it's kind of like, all right, this is that this is that convergence of reality, which is businesses are going to go back to downtown. And we've let the homeless encampment issue just do its thing. Because the CDC told us, don't clean out any encampments. You might spread the Rona. So everybody listened. They were good boys and girls. And they let it go. And here we are. And now we've got this conflict of, yeah, you know what? The violence and the guns and the drugs and the abuse and all that other stuff, that's not such a good look for downtown right now. So let's go ahead and sweepy, sweepy up that encampment. That's literally what we're doing. I mean, I covered the post encampment um, on 4th Avenue outside Westlake Mall. I covered that a week ago. Just, hey, here's what's going on. This place has been cleaned up. The city is jumping on this stuff because the stuff that's happening in downtown, they're trying to get a little control over that. Once they get a control over that, then they can start branching out and working other areas of the city. Maybe your city doesn't have this ridiculousness. I hope for your sake it doesn't. But mine does, and so I'm going to cover it because covering this is reasonable because it's not reasonable to go to a downtown area and just have it look like San Francisco. I mean, let's be honest. That's not the look we're shooting for here. We're trying to do something. So the concern expressed by many is the the increase in number of camp removals. So Mayor Bruce Harrell, he is he's cleaning out some encampments. I heard a couple more had been taken care of, I believe, yesterday, and that was March 31st. And what is happening is the police are often there, they are escorting, and they will help quadrant off an area. And then Seattle Department of Transportation comes in and they do a sweep. And they may or may not have tried to refer people to, you know, housing. And you know what, if you're living illegally on the sidewalk or in a park, guess what? you may or may not get the opportunity to talk to a counselor and get some referral. You're just in a position where you're living illegally and you're making it so that that sidewalk, people can't walk down or they can't roll their wheelchairs if they're handicapped. They can't do that. So you are on obstruction, unfortunately. So there's that. A lot of people want to say, well, they don't have anywhere to go. Well, they're being given referrals and they're not taking it. So I call nonsense to that. I just do. I just call nonsense to that. If an encampment is blocking access to sidewalk or driveway, it's considered an obstruction. All right. So we're sweeping those out with the effort of Seattle Police Department. And that seems to be doing well because we had that whole ridiculous issue with mutual aid and they went in and linked arms and they stopped the the terrible S dot from coming in and clearing out an encampment. And they did that for what, nine days, I think. And, um, and then the police came in and um, basically said, if you interfere with this cleanup, you're going to be arrested. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Cops go in, drop the hammer, clean it up, 
make it look better. People need housing. They're getting offers of referral. You need to take that up. You need to take up, up those offers or you need to figure out a gig elsewhere. And that is literally what's going on in Seattle um, on the regular here. So when you hear of the homeless encampments being swept, you will oftentimes see the homeless and their shopping carts just pushing an enormous, you know, pushing their, their, their lives possessions, which is really sad. But there's no good solution for this. There's no reasonable solution that is going to make everybody happy that is going to clean things up and get things back to the way they were, which you might call it sweeping everything under the rug. But you got to have some ground rules for getting this going. You just do because you can't have everybody living in the parks because then you literally end up like Echo Park in LA. And how did that end up? Not good. In those instances, under the city's multi-department administrative, those are the MARS, uh, MDARS, sorry, the multi-departmental administrative rules, the camp can be removed immediately without the traditional 72-hour warning notice to camp occupants. And that is what's happening. And that's what our new mayor, he is um, he's doing some of, some of that. And I'm kind of like, oh, you get yourself in hot water there. You're actually doing something. You can't have that. No, this is Seattle, man. You can't be going out in there and just cleaning house, Whew, right? Apparently. <laughs> Council member Tammy Morellas showed concern over the apparent displacement of people who are just moving from one camp to another when there's an encampment sweep. Well, they could take the offers of referral for shelter. Mm, yeah, that's what we're trying to measure how that number starts to decrease. Morales says, well, it decreases when people get into treatment programs, which there aren't enough of. They get into treatment programs and they get sober and they try and become members of society again. And yet we just want to identify it as people living in tents, not really what's going on in those tents or within those people's lives that's creating the situation where they are living in tents. If we're not paying attention to it, if we are tactically ignoring it, tacitly ignoring it, we are not going to solve that problem. Okay. Neither is just letting them live in the tents just willy nilly all over town. That's not really going to solve anything either. The city is still performing its own camp removals and referrals to, to shelters, even as the King County Regional Homeless Authority uh, begins to take over the same operations. So we're switching that the HOPE program to the city, I believe. Mark Dones, the CEO of the King County Regional Homeless Authority, said it's possible to reduce the number of unsheltered people living in downtown Seattle to zero in 10 to 12 months with the stakeholder cooperation. You know what? You can reduce the unsheltered people living in downtown Seattle today, today, if you wanted to. It would be kind of hardcore. But sometimes here on News for Reasonable People, being reasonable is sometimes hardcore. Like tough love, that's pretty reasonable because that's how you get somebody to actually do something when their life is at stake. So sometimes you got to do something. So you could go through and you could just clean out downtown Seattle. Now, I don't think the mayor is doing that. But he's doing something more than just, ah, you know, this, this is what we're doing. Kind of like what's happening down in Portland, right? It can happen if they give us housing, said Dale Moquion, who lives in a camp on the sidewalk near the north terminus of the South Lake Union trolley. Okay, they always say, if you give us housing. All right, here's the deal. With that housing, you can't do any drugs. You can't bring in any weapons. You can't bring all your stuff. You can't bring a dog. You can't bring this. You can't bring that. And people don't want to live by the rules. And the number one rule is, yeah, you can't be using drugs. You got to be sober. Mm. Yep. That's not good. Well, then uh, I retract that statement. I don't care if you give me housing. I'm not going. That's literally the conversation that goes down, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you on whether I really need that housing. Not. And that, this is what's going on. Sarah said, that's a good question. I don't know when asked what it would take to get her off the street. Yeah. Ricky Maine, who was just released from prison and lives in a shelter, didn't believe the zero goal can be achieved. I don't know how they're going to do that, he says. But if they want, they can start with me. So I'm here, Mayor. If you want to come and get me a house. Okay. So that's the thing is that the homeless say, well, I need housing. 
and they are then offered housing. And here are the rules and stipulations to live in said housing. And they remain on the streets or in their tents, wherever those tents may be. And that is the Mexican standoff that we've got going on right now. So we've got the numbers in front of us, less than half take the offer. Hmm, how come? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. They really like the color of their tent. No, it's because it's lifestyle choices. It's simply lifestyle choices. Now, if you want to argue there's a bunch of other stuff, yeah, but the vast majority, it's lifestyle choices. It is. And they know it and we know it. But a large contingent of people think, oh, no, these are people just down on their luck. They're stealing because they need a sandwich because they're so hungry. No, not the case. Not the case. These are lifestyle choices. And these are people choosing to live where they do. And they're living in our parks. And they're living on our streets. And they're living on our sidewalks. And all the other crap that comes with that. So Seattle actually doing some stuff. Kind of wild to see, right? All right. That's it for me on this episode of News for Reasonable People. Stay reasonable. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.